Dear viewers, I hope you are all fine. This ultrasound video shows a fetal demise and pregnancy of about 16 weeks with an encephalocele. You can see the fetal head. And an encephalocele is seen. attached to the fetal head. This is an encephalocele. A death that occurs prior to 20 weeks of gestation is usually classified as spontaneous abortion. Those occurring after 20 weeks constitute a fetal demise or stillbirth. An encephalocele is a rare disorder in which bones of the skull do not close completely. This creates a gap through which the cerebrospinal fluid, brain tissue and the meninges, the membranes that cover the brain can protrude into a sac-like formation. You can clearly see the, now the encephalocele attached to the fetal head. An encephalocele forms when the neural tube doesn't close properly during gestation. A neural tube is a narrow channel that folds and closed, closes to form the brain and spinal cord. The exact cause, however, however is unknown. It is usually occurs among families with the history of spina bifida and anencephaly. Ultrasound images of the fetus can reveal the presence of herniated fluid-filled sac outside the skull. Encephalocele that go undetected during gestation usually are diagnosed at birth by observation of the deformity. Sometimes encephalocele are detected during a routine prenatal ultrasound at as early as 13 weeks of gestation. If an encephalocele is suspected on an ultrasound, a fetal MRI can provide all the details necessary to confirm the diagnosis. But ultrasound alone may reveal all the details necessary for the final diagnosis of the encephalocele. You can see there is no fetal cardiac activity, no blood flow is seen in the fetus and no fetal movements are seen. Now the symptoms of the encephalocele are Neurological, neurologic problems, hydrocephalus, cerebrospinal fluid accumulates in the brain, spastic quadriplegia, paralysis in the limbs, microcephaly, an ab abnormally small head, ataxia, uncoordin uncoordinated muscle movements, developmental delay, vision problems, mental and growth retardation. Encephalocele are usually dramatic deformities diagnosed immediately after birth, but occasionally a small encephalocele in the nasal and forehead region can go undetected. This is a genetic component of the condition. It often occurs in families with the history of spina bifida and an encephaly in other family members. Now the babies with a frontal encephalocele, no associated symptoms, no associated syndrome or defect, and no brain tissue herniating into the sac have a good chance of survival. Babies with an encephalocele at the back of the head have a 55% survival rate.
Now, the remaining brain tissue is often exposed, not covered by the bone or skin. Affected babies are usually blind, deaf, unconscious, and unable to feel pain. Almost all the babies with anencephaly die before birth, although some may survive a few hours or a few days after birth. Now the pregnancy with the encephalocele hydops pustilus is a severe swelling edema in an unborn baby or a newborn baby. It is a life-threatening problem. Hydops develops when too much fluid leaves the baby, baby's blood stream and goes into the tissues. Now, <clears throat> spalding sign is also seen in this case, which shows that a considerable time has elapsed since the fetal demise. The spalding sign is a sign used in obstetrics. It is an indicator of fetal death. Most estimates place the precise time of fetal death at about seven days or more before overlapping and separation of fetal skull bones appear. This spalding sign refers to the overlapping of the fetal skull bones caused by the collapse of the fetal brain. It appears usually a week or more after fetal death in utero. Most investigators accept 2 cm or more overlapping as spalding sign positive. The symptoms of the second trimester loss are bleeding. Most commonly, bleeding is a sign of problem with the placenta and doesn't indicate a fetal demise. Cramping, the pregnancy lo losses in the second trimester can be due to an early labor. Loss of fetal movements, this can indicate a fetal demise. Now the, then there is a Robert sign refers to the presence of gas shadow within the heart or the great, uh, greater vessels. In case of fetal death in utero, it is a rare sign caused by post-mortem blood degeneration, usually seen one to two days after fetal demise and may be seen as early as 12 hours. Now, after fetal demise, the pregnancy symptoms such as tender breast or sickness may have gone. Some women have no signs at all that their baby has died and sadly only discovered the loss when they attend a routine antenatal ultrasound scan. This is called missed miscarriage. Now, stillbirth is defined as babies delivered with no signs of life, known to have died after 24 completed weeks of pregnancy. Interuterine fetal death refers to babies with no sign of life in utero. <coughs> the placental sign is a slight bloody discharge from the vagina coinciding with the implantation of embryo in the uterus. Now you can see the positive spalding sign. Bleeding during pregnancy loss occurs when the uterus empties. In some cases the fetus dies but the womb doesn't empty and the woman will experience no bleeding. Now the hospitals are obliged to remove the dead fetus from a woman as quickly as possible at most within three days from when the loss was discovered. Women who retain the dead embryo fetus can experience severe blood loss or develop an infection of the womb. These are 
rare complications. So the stillbirth is defined as a baby's delivered with no sign of life known to have died after 24 completed weeks of pregnancy. Intrauterine fetal death refers to babies with no signs of life in utero. So the breeding during pregnancy loss occurs when the uterus empties. In some cases, fetus dies, but the womb doesn't empty. You can find some important information in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel. If you do like this video, please click the like button. Thanks.